Hey guys, CP Modic here, back with another video, and we're here with something that's really different from our usual videos, and today we're here with a bit of a vlog style video. Usually in our 60 second breakdowns and reviews, we don't do these types of videos, but this is Personal Rig Update Part 1 2017, so I thought, why not start off with something a little bit different? Now, as you can tell, the Personal Rig is not up here, it's actually still at my desk, but we are going to be going ahead and making it desk worthy and great once again. So we'll just jump under the desk and you'll see exactly why we're going to be working on it. So as we can see under here, it is in a terrible situation. If I try and get, oh, there's not enough light, but you can see there's video cards with, you know, spaghetti wires coming out of it. There's an adapter there for some stupid reason. It just really does not look very presentable and something that I don't really want to have on top of my desk. As well, I've gone ahead and chopped all my cable management so I can get it out, so it looks kind of messy at the moment. But definitely when this thing is running and the LEDs are going, it does not look good. And finally, I don't know how much we're going to be able to see, but there's a really big gap between the uh, side panel and the case and that is because the cooler in there, the Noctua NHD 14 2011 or whatever it is, doesn't fit in this case and I sort of just jammed the panel on and also too, we'll see in a moment, but the other side panel doesn't fit either because there's too many wires. So to fix this, what I've done is gone ahead and grabbed myself a modular power supply. We have the RMX oh, 750 um, watt power supply from Corsair right here. We also do have a two terabyte drive because the one that's in my computer with all my Steam library on it is like seven years old and is dying. So there's not really that much I can do with it. It needs to be replaced. So we've got that going there. We've also do got some extra four terabyte drives for storage for these videos. So we're adding another eight terabytes to the pool, uh, which is going to be cool. Not really the focus of today's video, but we're on the table nonetheless. So let's get the computer out here and start working on it. So you can kind of get an idea what I meant by the side panel won't close because of all the wires. You can see it's sort of like completely fallen out. So I hope the clips down the bottom haven't broken, but uh, at the end of the day, that is a sizable gap that is uh, in the side panel, which just lets all the dust in. So at the moment, the computer is dusty as anything. We can get a better look here. The LED's fallen out. It is just terrible. So what I'm going to do is take it outside, give it a blow down, and then we can finish this project. So jumping into the project, the first thing we need to do is pull the entire computer apart. This will include the video cards, power supplies, motherboard, and everything else inside of this guy so we can get a clear idea of what is going on, and I can make some decisions about what we're putting back into the system and how it's going to look. So once I got the power supply out of the system, it's actually not a too bad unit for a mid to entry level system. It's all custom, it's got this sort of orange sleeving that was part of a previous project that never really went anywhere thanks to the cost of modifying computers, but um, was actually not a too bad power supply. It's a Thermaltake Tough Power 600 watt, it has a cool feature of like a cool down thing, so if you've been playing games and you suddenly shut down your computer, the power supply will keep all the fans in the system, so video cards, CPU, uh, case fans including its own fan are running for around, I'd say, five or so minutes before it fully shuts off. And it's sort of like a, a turbo timer on a car, but um, essentially this was a really cool feature unless you want your computer off, off when you turn it off. So that was cool, and also too, it gets loud as anything when you try and play games because... I don't really know. And the final problem that I have with it is it isn't modular. Whilst it has this cool little cutout that I did, I think, in a previous video, I'm not really sure, but... Whilst it is there, it is not modular, meaning all these cables get stuffed in the back of the case, and while, well, as you saw by the gap, um, it isn't the best thing. So we're swapping it out with, again, the aforementioned RM750X power supply modular awesomeness, but we do need to do some carbon fibre wrapping because, if I move all these SATA cables out of the way, uh, my carbon fibre wrap has arrived. So this is like two and a half meters or so worth of wrap uh, in width and then another four meters in length. So definitely gonna be a lot of projects uh, covered by this wrap, but definitely gonna be wrapping the power supply and some other components. Unfortunately, my white wrap hasn't arrived yet. I was meant to get a um, black like this one and a white in exactly the same, but the white hasn't come in yet. So for today's part one, we'll just be doing the black and then when the white comes in, we'll obviously do that. now. This power supply has just straight black cables. I want them sleeved, so again, this that shipment hasn't come in because, well, it is Christmas time, so uh, we are still waiting on a few extra components, but that can be done in the next video. But for today, we've got the power supply out. It isn't too bad, but again, uh, it is not for our application. We've got to get the cooler off and replace that and a few other things. So at this point, it's time to repair the lights and any custom cabling I damaged when removing the power supply. It's also too time to start some prep work for the new cooler and some custom parts. All 
Alrighty, so it is update time. It's been a couple hours since I did update you guys and we've done a couple things. First and foremost, I've almost finished wrapping the motherboard. So we've got this heatsink up here nice and wrapped in a very nice carbon fiber. I've made a little shield thingy out of the uh, building plastic stuff um, that will go over the I.O. to give it a nice clean look because once you um, move the board around, we can see without it, it looks kind of gross. With it, it looks nice and clean. Now, obviously, a little bit more does need to go into it. I need to make a little side box there. Um, I am also too going to make a little sort of cover that goes over this section right here just to keep things looking nice. Um, I also too need to finish wrapping the SATA ports because I want them nice and wrapped up. And then I'm almost finished with wrapping the motherboard. So it is coming along very nice and well. A lot of wrapping to do. Still got the video cards and the SSDs to do. I've done one of the SSDs. It looks super nice. I've never seen an SSD look this nice in person. It is just like super clean, super tight and no obnoxious branding. So all the random SSDs that I have around will all look like this. Nice and simple. I might actually get some um, stencils and cut out the letters SSD in white when the white finally comes in and sort of stick SSD sort of across it or on an angle for a nice cool accent. So still a little bit of trimming, there's a little bit on the side there that does need to be cleaned up but overall a really cool project is coming together. So got to finish the wrapping and uh, we will get into that. Wrapping the drives was pretty straightforward, but creating the RAM covers and I.O. shields did take a little bit of finessing to get them to work, as there was no schematics or plan that I could go from, it was just all eyeballing it and hope they all worked. Alrighty, so a quick update of the progress. We've got the three SSDs that I want to have on display all nicely wrapped. We've still got the extra one which will be hidden at the back. we got a lot of wrapping going on in terms of the motherboard. So we've got the IO wrapper done. we got both RAM um, dim side slot thing covers done. So basically I uh, cut out some whatever this core stuff is and uh, basically made a little shroud that goes over the top like so and it will be attached with electrical tape or something like that to blend in. Now, a lot of people will, will be concerned about cooling because I am gonna make little ends here if you can see it through the side panel. Uh, my solution to that is these mad little mini fans. So once my cabling, cabling, the cable sleeving comes in, I'm gonna pull these apart and uh, sleeve these little guys. I'm gonna find a way to either mount them at the bottom, which I don't think there's gonna be enough room, uh, but definitely somewhere up the top uh, something like that and for those of you who are worried about sound and noise uh, these things are already 7 volt fans I believe so I'm going to be running uh, 12 volt fans that I'm going to be running them at 7 volts for a much lower noise and a much lower RPM so they're going to sit either up there or uh, down at the bottom depending on where I can mount them and overall this sort of top part is looking really really sick I really do love the uh, carbon fiber look to it on the cooler on the board and on the RAM covers and everything looks really really sweet now it's just time to get all of this into a computer. With most of the components wrapped at this stage and most things already made, it's time to take the computer and assemble it and take a look at its final form. Alrighty, so here is where we are at at this point. We've got the cooler in, we got the RAM covers in. Uh, unfortunately, my I.O. panel, wherever it's gone, uh, my I.O. little adapter I made, I don't know if we can see in there or not, uh, could not make any clearance beside the cooler. So I had to ditch it, which was a little bit unfortunate, but at the moment, overall, this case is looking absolutely awesome. Nice stealth black uh, carbon fiber look. Obviously, this cable down here needs to be re-sleeved for a more stealth look, but overall, everything is looking really, really sweet. And I do like the uh, nice little shroud thing I kind of made up with some um, carbon fiber wrap just to keep the Noctua fan a little bit stealth because as we can see down here, you'd be able to see the fan and honestly, it would look pretty crap if you could see that and not on the rest of the system. So still got the floor to build, uh, still got to wrap the video cards and throw them back in. Uh, but overall, at this point, everything is looking really, really sweet. Now with the final form realized, it's time to knock out some video card backplates for some stealth looks and I'm also too going to be making a flooring system so I can hide any extra cables under there that won't fit behind the motherboard tray thanks to the lower end case that I'm building in. Not to mention the all important cable management for the rest of the system will be very much helped thanks to this flooring system and what we've got going on here.
Alrighty, so I guess it is time for an update. It is now five hours since I did a last update and quite a lot has happened. So the video cards, the backplate is not attached there, but the video cards have been wrapped and a backplate has been made up. Uh, this one's just not attached yet because I've still got to make some changes. The SLI bridge is also too wrapped for a really clean look. Very nice looking there. I really do like the contrast between the um, carbon fiber black and the sort of copper color. I really, really love that. Didn't think I was going to, but I actually do. Uh, the top part hasn't changed too much, very stealth in there, very nice looking, the cooler is looking awesome. I'm just now at the stage of wrapping the hard drive. So I've got the WD Blue that I just bought today, nicely wrapped. Uh, I've also too got this WD Red over here to wrap as well. I believe I have one more drive, but I may have lost track of where it has gone. Now, unfortunately, the SSDs, I wanted them on display in this lower section here. However, there just isn't enough room for it. So they've gone back in their little caddies. Uh, they fit really snug now with the uh, carbon fiber wrap. They do still look really nice in those caddies, but I'm really bummed out I couldn't have them on display. Maybe in a future update, I will actually take out this drive cage and just have one long sled here to throw all the drives on, which will look really sweet. But for now, they're going back in their caddies, in their little hide holes, and they're looking pretty good. Now it's time to throw a few final touches on the build and then it is complete. Alrighty, so we are just about done. It's been another like five hours since uh, the previous update. It is getting quite late at night, but I am almost, I'd say 99% done with this rebuild. So uh, we will start at the back. This is where we used to have a ton of cables and they went everywhere and it was bad and I just never wanted to see it again. Gone is that rat nest of cables. We have our SATA, uh, SATA lines, SATA lines uh, running up and running down into their ports where they need to go. We only have the bare minimum amount of cables that we need. So we got one Molex arm, two SATA arms for the bank of three drives on the top and bottom right here. Uh, flipping around, oh, this computer is really heavy. Uh, flipping around to the front, we see our custom job that has been done today. Kicking things off with the hard drives. As you can see here, I've only got two in at the moment because I only really need two drives. I'll be throwing in an extra one relatively soon. Um, so we've got the two drives there. We've got an extra SSD hiding down there because it didn't get sleeved and um, well, it'll just live down there forever. We've got our three drives up here. These are all 120 gig drives. Unfortunately, I'd like to throw in some bigger ones, but don't have any at the moment. Uh, but they are all looking super mad and custom there. Moving into the center section of our build, we have the two GeForce GTX uh, 660s, which are getting older and I will be replacing hopefully soon. But at the moment, this is what I'm gonna be running with. I also do need to fold that back down again and probably reheat that to stick that down permanently. Uh, so we've got those two running there with our custom cut floor that we got going on here. So we've got a custom cut over here uh, for the little light switch. Again, I do need to clean up a few bits and pieces here and there. So as I said, it's only about 99% done. Like over here, I just need to fix up that little corner. Uh, but we've got our custom cut flooring, which keeps all the cables and the power supply under here nice and clean and tidy. We've got our SLI bridge, which I also too custom wrapped for that sort of stealth factor. And up here is the epic cooling solution. So uh, basically what had happened is I built these two covers for the RAM modules. And what I found is under sort of really heavy loads, especially RAM intensive loads, the RAM got a little bit on the warm side. It wasn't hot enough that I'd be too concerned, but it was warm enough that I thought, why not put in some cooling? So we got these little baby uh, 10 mil blower fans. Unfortunately, they're not left and right specific fans. They're both, I believe, uh, left fans. So they blow out left. Uh, like that so this is upside down so I will be sourcing a right fan so they can both be one pointing out that way up the top and the other pointing out that way up the top but for now uh, we've got one up and one down again with different parts of this series we'll go into replacing different parts of the cooler. Obviously up here we got another uh, sort of whole bunch of custom carbon fiber wrapping. So we got some on the uh, heatsink of the VRM. We got some here and here over the RAM covers. And of course we have the fans. Now the way the air blows out, uh, comes out here and then I made this little sort of uh, custom, uh, I don't even know what you call it, like little chute that the air comes out and sort of curves around. And it's actually designed to go in here, blow up the top and then out the top where there is an air vent on top of the case. 
So it is actually a really cool kind of accidental design. I blocked off the bottom side, so essentially the air goes in through the fan, gets blown in and down into the cooling. Can't go down here because, well, there's a video card and a blocked off wall, so it gets forced all the way up the RAM modules and out the top. Now, obviously I don't have a thermal camera, so I can't exactly do any specific numbers, but what I found is about a two to three degree uh, uh, temperature lowering or performance increase uh, adding these two fans. Now, these fans are not spinning fast. You cannot hear them in the system, and I'm not talking like you can't hear them from a reviewer standpoint where they're like, you know, still loud, but we pretend we can't hear them. Legitimately, they're running at probably two to 300 RPM, which moves just enough air to bring down the temperature, but you can't hear them at all. I'll show you in just a moment what they look like. We also have LEDs hidden in here, 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 and also two up along the top here. We've got some also to shoved in there. And overall, that is about it for my system. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it up and we can take a look at some fancy looking B-roll at what we've built. <laughs> Hey guys, so we have gotten to the end, or at least the end of part one. And as you can see, it literally looks like a bomb has gone off on this table and even worse throughout the rest of the room. So whilst there is a ton of a mess and there's Noctua fans here and air over here and a ton of carbon fiber wrap everywhere else, a ton has been done in terms of progress today. Now the PC should have been here, but it's actually over there offloading uh, all of the 128 gig cards that we filled up uh, whilst filling, uh, filming, in fact, this video. I'm on my last 32 gig card here with only a few minutes left. And if I don't get this shot right, then, well, I'm gonna have to go and grab those cards. So that's over there doing that. And it's also to transferring files to the new drives that are also to chucked in the system. So at the moment, it is looking awesome, stealth, and as you've seen by the B-roll, actually somewhat worthy of sitting up on a desk right now. But there is still a lot more work that needs to be done on this PC in the visual department. First off, we're going to be getting our second roll, just like this one, but in white, so we can go ahead and throw on the accents for the computer. Also too, since shooting uh, the working on video, I've also to realize that one of the video card fans, this little guy in particular, has completely seized up and it only moves when you really force it with your fingers. So unfortunately, uh, that has died, which means, well, I'm going to have to uh, replace the fan. Now, I've already salvaged one off, but for now, we're just gonna use the salvage one on the actual card itself. So it's a little bit disappointing that a fan died on it, but it's kind of to be expected, uh, kind of to be expected because it is a lower quality fan. But for the rest of the system, it is coming along very well. The little blower fans that are keeping the RAM nice and cool are working perfectly, and overall, it is a very clean and stealth build and I do really like it. But what is next in this series for part two? Well, for part two is obviously adding the white carbon fiber for some of those really cool accents and then also to possibly replacing the side panel window, which we did in that video right there, uh, with something that is a little bit more nicer because at the moment, the side panel window is a little bit on the scratched up side and isn't really the best in terms of viewing experiences. Maybe replace it with a piece of glass or something along those lines. So that is definitely to come. Then for the third part, we'll start actually upgrading the internals of the computer with new video cards, maybe some more RAM and definitely more storage. But with that being said, that is the DIY progress and process of building your own sort of custom parts, custom floors and custom backplates. If you have any questions with the processes, techniques or anything that I actually did that wasn't really clarified in the video, leave them down below and I'll be more than happy to give you a hand there. Now do keep in mind if you are planning on working on a project like this yourself, do have a bit of skill behind you. I've wrapped quite a few computers at this stage, so for me carbon fiber wrapping wasn't much of a problem. I'm also to a qualified network technician, so wiring up low voltage cabling, which is exactly what I did with this build, is no problem for me. Things like soldering, crimping, and basically all 
all the sort of electrical side I've been taught by professionals and I'm also too qualified to do. So do keep in mind if you are planning on doing electrical work, get someone who is qualified or knows what they're doing to take a look over it so you don't burn your house down. And finally, have plenty of time. I started this project at 11 o'clock this morning. It is now 8.30 p.m. at night and I've been going all day, stopping once for lunch and once for dinner. It has been a constant wrapping building, cutting wires, soldering wires, splicing things in. It has been a massive project. But otherwise, guys, with that being said, all the links to the stuff we use, including carbon fiber wrap and various other bits and pieces I mentioned throughout this video can be found down below with the Amazon associate links. Nevertheless, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time for another video. Make, 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 make